Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Drinks Glue. And tonight we have a very special Moodle Cup showcase for you. Um, on the commentary team, we do have two fantastic individuals for you. Allow me to introduce them, introduce them to you. Uh, first and foremost, we have one free fits. And then we also have the one, the only, the Physics Shebang. Physics, how you doing tonight? I am doing quite well, Drinks Glue. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for letting me hop on comms today. Um, definitely looking forward to being a mentor in this this season of the Moogle Cup, Moogle Cup Two. Um, one free fits. How you doing today? And uh, you know what are you what are you looking forward to on this uh, Moogle Cup Two after finishing up Moogle Cup One yourself as a mentor? <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's it's that time. Well. Sort of, depending on where you are. Fall is will arrive eventually, um, and as as the air gets crisper, I'm excited for another round of the the Moogle Cub. As we see here, we've got our mentor and racer pairings. Um, I really enjoy being a mentor. I had a really good time with it last time around, um, and my own play improved throughout the Moogle Cup, I would say as well, that I was better racing after the Moogle Cup mentoring because um, in preaching, you know, the fundamentals of going fast, I found myself practicing them a little bit more and kind of had like a my own mentor voice, you know, in my head around like, well, did you need to open that chest? Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of what... I'm excited about. I always love the enthusiasm from the new players and helping them kind of navigate and get up to speed. Playing the game, you know, or riding alongside of them is is always a a very fun experience. Absolutely, and that's something that I can second as well. While I haven't done the Moogle Cup myself. I will be this season, but I haven't done it yet. I have done quite a bit of mentoring over the last few months, and I agree, you know, as you go to help other people, you also uh, do have that mentor voice, like you said, that sort of just is speaking to you the whole time of, you know, what you need to be doing, and all those tips that you're giving to other people come straight back to you. And uh, speaking of people that I've mentored, Nani Gray is one that I mentored early on in Her Worlds Collide journey um i'm using her pronouns i'm actually not sure so i'm gonna switch to they but i did uh mentor them uh shortly after they started and they have improved greatly since then so i'm eager to see how much they improve uh throughout the course of their moogle cup um experience now leaf i'm not particularly familiar with um do you know of their skill level regarding World yeah Squad? i know leaf uh participated in moogle cup one um, in order to, to graduate, one needs to advance out of the the group phase. So um, they were starting from pretty much square one. I saw them talking about it a little bit in, in the race room ahead of time. So they're kind of here representing um, how far someone can go from being brand new to the randomizer to where they ended up at the end and, and they're looking to continue to improve and you know hopefully break out but kind of the i guess the consolation prize for not making it out of groups is you can come back and do it again absolutely i'm looking forward to seeing uh, how they both do um i do have to say shout outs to nobody war with five gifted tier one subs thank you so much for your support we appreciate you and it looks like we are underway with a yeti an X Magic Blitz Gao, and I did miss Setzer. Did you see Setzer's skill? Um, I'll keep my eye for it right now. We might get a, a peek it's here. Like the Steel, natural magic. Ooh, that's a little rough. So we're basically just looking at Blitz and chest bumps to start us off. So really and here in the beginning, you know, we're going to see acquiring loot. Having the Yeti, we might peek this spot. Which I, like. I do like this move a lot. Yeah, what Nani Gray's doing here, being able to peek that early is awesome. So that's empty. It is possible to peek all the way up, and if we saved before going into Narsh, we don't have to walk back down. So 
information is good, helps our decision making. Um, Ooh, I see Leaf is getting boss. completely ruined over here by this guy at Returners. Yeah, so with this start, not the most like starting checks in the pool in terms of, I guess, the characters. Sets are linked to three, Gao having two, Umaro having one. So there's really only the six plus the ones that are always available on the board. Um, I'll be curious to kind of see if that leads to like divergence where there could be two characters early that offer different paths. Um, we should probably talk about kind of what the settings are for the Booba Cup in general. Anything that you like kind of caught your eye in in the review of them. Sure. Well, the Moogle Cup settings are intended to be a bit on the, I guess you could say, easier side, as in they are just not quite as strict or limiting as some Ultras League standard race flags can be. Uh, this one does have some lower scaling as well as higher leveling of your characters, and enemy scaling only goes up from characters and espers and not from dragons. Considering there are cheaper rods in Moogle Cup Seeds than there are in Ultras League, there are also Super Balls available in shops. This does open up the ability to do some early dragons, especially if you find some Super Balls. Uh, and with this Umaro start, that leads you straight to one. Um, but that won't increase your scaling either. So in general, this is much safer. Um, I see a Ragnarok just showed up on Leaf's mm -hmm. side at the free Kolingen in there. So that's a, a heck of a start. Hopefully someone can use it. Maybe a Yeti. Yeah, we always love to see the Yeti wielding the big weapons. Um, I believe Coliseum rewards are pretty generous. I think they're all visible. Uh, yeah, 100% visible, which is huge with an Amaro start. So one thing I'm always like, kind of talking about with like a mentee in the opening is like, you've got your shops, you've got your looting. We can always choose to break that off a little bit early and take a gamble and see if we find like something great at the Coliseum or if we've kind of gotten through the seed but we don't feel like we have the firepower to get through the tower checking it before the going into the tower is another opportunity you know where it was like well fire 2 is getting it done for most of the seed but I know <laughs> I need stuff for other characters to do so I'm curious to see if we we get a peek on the Coliseum yeah, Fire 2 won't really cut it, uh, going to Kefka's Tower or doing the Kefka Climb, so you definitely want a bit more than that toward the end game. Uh, one thing we are definitely searching for in this case is going to be the dried meat for Gao. Uh, that is huge in this particular uh, this particular spread of characters, because it's unless you find something really good at shops, it's going to be hard to go do Yeti right away, because you really do want to kill that dragon. You'd like to have an Esper beforehand just to learn the spells off of it. Um, so getting that dried meat does open the Velt check early. It's preferred to do that anyway because you don't have to worry about all the, the trash encounters that you run into throughout the game when you do the Velt check early. You only have Lobos, so 100% chance of a Gal possible check. And then Velt is a great uh, cave on the Velt, or Serpent Trench is a wonderful grinding check as well. So we hope to find that dried meat as soon as possible, I imagine. Yeah, indeed. Definitely a nice nice chain there. Um, a lot of times, and this is something that... Ooh, that was not Lumina. Um, in the basement. The Lumina, faster Ragnarok, we can like, raise scaling. Wow. The faster our levels go up, levels are generally power. They're reliable power, you know, like in an egg. In, so we got a lot of oh, tools. Oh, goodness. So, <laughs> I, like... We can say that the Moogle Cup flags are easier, and, like, I think, you know, arguably that is true, but I would also say, like, in a racing environment, they can actually be a lot... To me, they can be very challenging, because since there are so many offensive options on the table, it's really an exercise in, like, the fundamentals, and having, like kind of an aggressive decision around do I have enough power to beat the game as fast as possible? Because with the abundance of riches 
we can get caught fiddling in our menus too much to have like the optimal equipment um teaching people spells when all they really need to do is swing illuminas things like that so i think it's a really good opportunity to work on those fundamentals and i like to play a moogle cup you know from time to time just so i can kind of focus on that as opposed to some of the harder flag sets is like where am i going to get offense to get going like how am i going to beat the statues that are going to be in kafka's tower all the time those sort of things well considering the absolute slog we we went through in the uh blackjack side of the kgp uh, you and i both know quite a lot about dealing with incredibly low offense at those seeds so it is a nice change of pace to come into a moogle cup seed every now and then and just enjoy 3300 gold rods like in this shop right here mm -hmm. i mean just that little thing is just like oh this is wonderful i love this this is there's all my offense for the next 20 minutes we're great we're, we're all gravy um, but like you said, you know, there's a ton of offense and a lot of offensive options. So when do you have enough mm. having that recognition that I have enough offense? Uh, we have a, a Yeti with an Illumina. That's that's huge. But yeah, you know, like you said, spells are great. But if you have a Ragnarok and Illumina, a Gauntlet for Sale in South Figaro, which we did see there, you know, how much more do you really need? <laughs> At least in the early game, you're ready to cook pretty fast. Did we find yeah. dried meat? I did miss that. Looks like we did. I think so. In Zen. So that's good that it's on path, most likely. I think that's the only place he went that I wasn't looking at. So yeah, this is great. Yeah, Zen has the goods. Like, oh man, definitely yeah, with like a magic power boosted character, breaking rods is a viable offense the entire game. Um, it's expensive, even if you're only paying, th you know, 3k per. However, I would definitely advise, like, seeing them in a shop, fire being the most common, like, weakness element. Even, like, buying five of them will get us through our first couple of checks, and then we can see if we find some more offense along the way, or, like, get espers with good spells. Or, worst case get levels to get like our physical offense online absolutely it looks like the velt check does reward us with edgar i haven't seen his skill just yet but that kind of throws in another character that has some iffy checks you know his uh, you can go straight to the castle but ideally you would like to do that while you're already doing the basement or the the engine room of south figaro world of ruin that way you can do both sort of in one go and not backtrack but I don't hate that Leaf is looking like he's going to head straight there, hoping for some espers. I, I I don't hate that move, but I probably would have done... Well, I'm not sure if I would have done Cave on the Velt first. What do you think your move would be? Do Cave on the Velt while you're there, or hope for an esper, and then do Cave on the Velt and try to learn some spells? And not I mean, waste hope for an esper. Like, I do tend to favor pushing scaling up early, particularly if we have any sort of magic like offense like breaking fire rods that can get us um like good offense for low levels oh okay so edgar and Celeste can both natural wield the big swords Edgar has rage i'm gonna agree with benching the yeti at this point it's gonna be controversial but i agree as well he's fun but a liability um i do like that he did go ahead and put edgar in the front um, not everybody knows, but you can get half off all shops in both World of Ruin and World of Balance Castles and World of Ruin South Figaro. You don't get half off World of Balance South Figaro, but putting him as the leader of your party does give you half off in those other locations. So good move on his part. And a thing that I like, I always encourage for the newer players and um, like I did it a lot when I was learning is to actually like have like an opening shopping list like written down because a lot of times there's just like a lot going on playing the game thinking about what to do next and so anyway we can externalize a little bit of that i do paper notes still but like to write down something in the shop that maybe we want to remember it can take a couple extra seconds so sometimes it feels like a waste but it can also really pay off when it's like i need to know where that flame shield was because 
I have Merton, and I just need one more. Or, oh yeah, that gauntlet. I have two very powerful swords. I got their offense figured out for the rest of the game. Absolutely. It looks like uh, Leaf is not being scared of scaling whatsoever. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going straight to the other free check. We're sticking at level three. We want that Esper. I'm still waiting to see if he's going to stop by that relic shop to get that gauntlet. Um, when he looked at it, he didn't have the money and just kind of skipped out. But that would be huge right now to get a couple gauntlets out there with Celis and uh, Edgar Ooh. with those big swords. Ooh, Six dragon characters. starting, huh? That's a little rough. Oh, my goodness. Six characters right off the bat. That is not great. Uh, this dragon's a little bit rough as a starting because he can sneeze, if I recall, and just kind of knock your characters out. But yeah, otherwise, this, I, this scaling not too bad. That I think is worth breaking a rod on. Just to I agree. Go faster. He's a big old sack of hit points, so I mean, you know, a pearl get him out proc of the way. is gonna get probably done here. Yeah. So nicely done. Big chunk of experience caught up. That fight will be significantly harder for Leaf, but again oh, with man. rods and some luck, it's still doable at this scale. Definitely. So one thing I'm seeing Leaf do quite often, actually repeatedly now, is um, frequently go to a location with that unlocked with the newest character. And one thing that's been told to me several times that this randomizer tends to be more deep than it is wide. You typically, not all the time, there's definitely times where this is not the case, but more often than not, your newest character is going to be gating some other characters. So at this point, with Leaf chilling with six characters already, um, I don't know that Burning House would be the, the first choice for me as your grind check, because he is the newest character and has a, a higher chance of having a character, but also it's Burning House. So, what are your thoughts about that right now? It looks like that's where he's headed. Um, I think that... And we'll see if this is just like a shopping trip too, but... Um, I would say... We're definitely looking for encounters. I think... Burning House might be a little bit like... This trench is full of nightmares. Like, Leaf doesn't know that, but... <laughs> Yeah, this is a disastrous warp stone, definitely. Get like, out of there right outsider now. Outsider Madams, Enoch Fortis, and then, like, the dragon is probably the only thing that can actually be killed reasonably without dying down here. Um, Earring's nice. I'd take a fight outside all... of um, Tamasa before I went in Burning House. I don't want to do it. I don't want to run in there at level three. Um... I'd be a little bit worried not having like defense piercing damage to deal with what could potentially be a a very high hit point Magi Master, for instance. Oh yeah, so, and if he runs into a Magi Master at this scaling, it's that's it's over. <laughs> You're out. It's reset. a little bit of a yeah, like especially being like low level now, we could like invest time to really. Um, fight a lot of enemies in here but it kind of makes the risk of running into a wall that we can't get through like even more costly drinks glue is right you can't win races being afraid um i believe there's a difference between playing afraid or uh you know outright hubris uh this is this is quite the move i hope it pays out for him though this is uh this could be like a race decider if these grind fights are incredible the boss this is, is a doable. decent one you know, like, this could absolutely be a race ender, but it this is, is a... definitely an interesting choice. I'd be cracking them rods. This is definitely what we see, and I will be, I'm getting, I always am on mentee is kind of nudging a little bit of, like, we got those to use, right? Like, we didn't buy them to look at them in our backpack. Especially absolutely. where that physical damage is so low, I would want to you know it's a little bit of we try to find that balance when we're mentoring in terms of i really try not to tell them what to do and they're free to ask questions and then one of those can be would you tell me what to do and then i'll be like okay do this but 
This would be Atma weapons. Work. Atma weapons at South Figaro World of Ruin half off. Huge. Half off circlets. All the magic hats are here too. And I'm thinking that Leaf probably has Edgar in the back row currently for safety, but I hope he does remember that he does need to be row. Oh, never mind. He just rode him. <laughs> he just remembered he needs to be in the front mm -hmm. row for max damage Ragnarok. Illumina does not need that. It is same damage back row, but not the rag. Yeah, they will definitely get through it. It's more of that the first fight, I find, if we're going to be aggressive with scaling, we have to be aggressive in our offense and so that means cracking a rod sometimes that might mean cracking a shield even where it's like all right i don't want to spend 10 minutes fighting this mob at the very beginning so that's a that's something that develops it's kind of that sense of like when can i afford to fight this out when do i need to like expend a one-time resource to to save me a lot of time. This is a much better one. It is, this is a good one. He's got quite a bit of levels. He's level 10 now. I did see that he put an experience egg on Setzer, which I think is interesting. Um, I'm not sure what Setzer has that would require an experience egg at this point, but um, I think he must have some kind of plan for him later. But typically I like my experience eggs to be on my big weapon swingers if possible. So either Celis or Edgar in this case. Especially if I had an Esper, but he just has no Espers right now. Nani Gray did get one in the trench, though, so at least uh, they have the ability to learn some spells. I did not see what they have on them, but hopefully they're not garbage. Going to Coliseum. I like that. Let's see what's her offer here. Nothing. Nothing for them. Yeah, that's... Not great, but it's always good just to take, you know, the extra 30 seconds to check it. I bet, you know, that ammo. We're, we're probably offering peeking. I think we have enough tools in terms of weapons that two or three characters have, like, end game offense. It's not online fully yet because we need levels. Um, nice. A lot of good chops. Yeah, I saw some snipers there. What else was there that you saw? Uh, snipers, just like ninja stars. If we had, a, if we had a thrower, spreading the levels around. I think I feel like Lee's got some potions, but I, they do seem to be pressing pretty aggressively. I would say this is max sending going on right now. Absolutely. Uh, this is, uh, you know, not mine. <laughs> this, this is not. Anymore. I typically wouldn't play this hard even on a Moogle Cup seed, so it is it is quite the move. I did see that he is using Edgar's Gold Bear. He didn't use it this time, but he is using Gold Bear, which is fantastic. That's just a raw two times increase to damage, or is it two and a half? Gold Bear is two, two. Wait, yeah, no. so just there's two and a half. There's another one that's two, and then there's a bunch of 1.5s, and then of course the top animal attack, the stray cat. Absolutely, which is 4x, correct? Mm -hmm. For the cat yeah. scratch. Ooh, so uh, Kamir is saying they have no healing. Which, if they have no potions or any healing, then this was quite the quite the foray. I'm, I'm, I'm racking my brain here. A potion. So a dried meat is 100 HP. That's true, and we don't have any natural. Oh, we had they might natural. have like an elixir. Like, if we're going to be aggressive, we are going to have to. We got a tonic. We got revives. Got a uh, X potion. You know, if you got to use it, you got to use it. All right, let's, let's see if this pays off for him. Senor Behemoth, this is possible, crack but those, probably not great. Crack yeah, rods. <laughs> crack those rods, crack them all day. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. That's an, we, we need procs, and we need to throw. This is a fire everything situation. Yeah, and we need to get him out of phase one as soon as possible. Phase one is the dangerous phase where he does a lot of his nasty attacks. Phase two tends to be a lot of instant death shenanigans. We don't want to proc. I feel. I think if you cast, if you proc pearl, oh, then they counter with something awful. 
Uh, I think so too, but this might kill it. Is it enough? Uh, well, they're only countering with Osmos, though. So could be scaling. Ability scaling in Moogle Cup yeah. might be a little lower than we're used to as Ultros League veterans. Which is great, because, yeah, I've been... Uh, at this scaling, it wouldn't happen, but I've 100% just been straight garnered after mm -hmm. using an ability on him in high scaling, so he can be deceptively horrible. All right, not quite through the first phase. We're at six times two, 12. It's probably like 500, or they, they probably got like 5,000 per per phase. I don't think we have any instant death. We do. Easily. This is Moogle Cup. We can just throw out a Phoenix down, if I recall. Oh, so the, the man, undead I forget flag. about that all the time. The Moogles yeah. down, but I do as a mentor. I'm always just like, oh. Well, we'll see if that's enough. true right now. Is a Phoenix down coming? A Reviv? Reviv, that works. All right, yeah, there we go. So Moogle Cup does have undead flags uh, turned on. So you can kill undead bosses with Phoenix downs or revivifies. Very room. important to know. Yeah, that was actually a really good fight uh, at the scaling. He didn't do anything nasty. He has the instant death phase two. Got it's on okay, through. Right? That was that was one hell of a risk, but hey, it worked out. Now, what character is it? At this point, I think at seven and no. zero, we're definitely looking for a character skip at some point. We only need two more. At some point, we would love to see nine characters and just roll through Kefka once we unlock it, and not have to worry about doing anything more for the skip later. And that is one thing that did change now that I just brought this up. Moogle Cup won uh, in an effort to encourage the Moogles to spend more time in Kefka's tower learning how to route it the long way without the shortcut. It did require two of the three objectives, and those objectives being either 22 checks, nine characters or 12 espers you needed to achieve two of those things to get the skip in moogle cup one however that has been changed to the standard ultros league six setting of one of those so you only need to have 22 checks nine characters or 12 espers to get the skip from now on which i know there are some people in chat who are going to be absolutely celebrating with that news Not magic even power through. plus two esper yeah, that was is daryl's tomb reward yeah, a nice Air Force fight using some good rage knowledge to hit clean sweep. Um, I would say, uh, you know, both of these players have had mentoring either through the like sign up program or the past Moogle Cup. So I think, you know, they're already showing off pretty solid game knowledge in terms of just knowing their boss weaknesses. Oh no, it's a train. We have yeah. birth on somebody, right? Are they still in the party? It was Gao, and we do not have Blitz anymore, so uh, that's that. That is a shame. I would say the thing about picking up Cyan there, we've already committed to being a little bit off the off the path, right? And we could just because this is undead, right? Yeah, I'm a little surprised that he uh, remembered phase two of Senor Behemoth, but doesn't remember that this one is undead and could absolutely just be Phoenix down to death. Got it. I, mean, I did see he's, he has 25 Phoenix downs, so no matter what happens, he's got a lot of revive yeah. power currently. So, science checks are pretty fast, right? Like, um, So to me having oh they're getting they got a character here too didn't they yeah mog <laughs> yeah this is a wild seed for characters they're just everywhere it's just a friend percent is what this one's gonna be which Ooh, is actually ring. yeah it's, it's actually pretty crazy um you would think it's okay to get a bunch of characters but i find that that kind of muddles up my game plan a lot when you have that many options on the table, like where do you go? I definitely prefer a more focused seed. Do you have any preferences in that regard? Oh, I mean, there's what I want, but I feel like seeds almost never give me what I want. So I, I'm more, <laughs> I don't, I don't want from worlds collide anymore. I just try to deal with. What well, like water, time. as you said earlier, flow yeah. like water in chat. Yeah, you just gotta, Correct. you just gotta I mean, go with it. In a perfect world, like, I like to get a couple of early espers, but not too many. Like, give me, like, three, three, and then I want a character, and then probably another one after that. And 
than a lot of espers. Um, what I find myself getting into more often is like the opposite of what Leaf is experiencing, where I'll be like 3 8 and last locate like character 4. Um, those feel bad a lot. Definitely. Of time. I agree with that for sure. But and with these flags, I don't think we're as magic reliant. Um, the stat boost, you know, strength or speed would be nice for our sword characters, but they will hopefully get a couple espers here. I like this. I like this play here. I'll be curious if they go through to the end to unlock Magitek, although I don't think anyone has it. I have not seen Magitek in any of the abilities, so... Yeah, my typical go is just to... I, I don't usually want to do Magitek all the way through if I can avoid it. I do prefer to just leave it for the front two. But there are definitely seeds that call for doing the full thing even without unlocking Magitek, and I still don't quite know how to make that choice, so I typically just save it until I have to do it, unless I have unlockable Magitek that would be useful. It's just yeah, such a long right check. takes a while, but if I didn't love my levels, then I then I'll hop on. That's kind of what I use to determine is like, ooh, I'm kind of a little behind on scaling. I'll take this card ride. Not any quickly getting up to six with South Figaro basement being lock, and then picking up Celeste on the throne. I'm curious if they'll head down to Ancient Castle, having a lot of free and fast checks that just pop on the board with the Narsh Weapon Shop, the South Figaro World of Balance Cave, and the South Figaro Basement. I think a Narsh trip would also potentially be in order for, for Nani. World of Ruin Narsh. Um, it could be with Locke for sure, heading up to do Yeti as well. They looked at Yeti, they know it's not a character. Yeah, I do um, see uh, Kmir was mentioning that they hadn't done any uh, South Figaro looting. I believe it was Nani Gray that was actually in South Figaro World of Ruin. That's where the Atma weapons are for half off. So we do have some uh, pretty thick offense there for us later on when we're higher level, especially with that experience egg. That's true. We do already also have a Ragnarok and an Illumina, which are pretty good. Definitely. I mean, we, I guess we don't really need that Atma weapon at this point unless we find an offering, in which case it becomes very appealing with that, with that experience egg. Not early, but it definitely solves late game offense straight off the bat. And it looks like Nani is going to check some monsters in a box. So let's see what she finds here. There's two options or two opportunities to find Katana Soul for an offering. I'm kind of looking at the or level between the two right now. And I feel like Leaf definitely has an edge on the level side. And they have done more progression. It's just all has led to characters and an ice shield because... M Tech one was empty. Well, not empty. Just an item reward. Yeah, I believe it was an ice shield, and I don't think Nani has checked the uh, basement yet there either, which go. is just another character. So Nani has done less free checks, which is sort of what's giving the illusion that Leaf has more progression. You mm -hmm. know, Leaf immediately rolled onto those free checks as fast as possible, while Nani is saving some in reserve and not immediately heading to the basement to check that free check right now. But I assume maybe they have the idea to, you know, they're going to go back for those Atma weapons maybe, and when they do, if they still need something, maybe they can go check the basement and see what's down there. Yeah, I think Nani, it's like, I'm, I'm here already. I, maybe I want to go fight a dragon. Get, get some of that, get some of that physical offense online sooner. Take progression first, and then maybe fight an egg. Another egg. Okay, so yeah, I think what you're saying is exactly what I would be thinking about doing. I'd come here, kill this dragon. I would go up to World of Ruin Narsh. Obviously, weapon shop. I don't know that I'd even bother with shield at this point. The offense is insane. Do you really need mm -hmm. Illumina or Ultima? Um, and then head straight up and take that other dragon, catch up on levels, get those espers mm -hmm. working, milk those experience eggs, and just start swinging for the fences. These level magic fights, they offer a ton. 
magic points. They offer no experience. They're all undead, these ones. Um, definitely worth running from if, if we're not gonna... Yeah, I just don't play with them. I'd rather just <laughs> run. Um, it, with the amount of offense, I don't think I would need the magic power, There's especially with multiple stuff, dragons yeah. available. You know, if I need to learn something, I got, you know, Colosseum. I have Mount Zozo. I have South Figaro, uh, Ancient Castle. I have Umaro. There's a lot of dragons that I would rather do than any level magics. They are instant runs 100% of the time for me. We uh, have a question in chat. Can you run from the minecart fights? Yes. Yes, we can. Another egg. Was there like a, a chest egg in the, in the back of Ancient Castle? In addition to the... Oh, was Ooh, it the I don't know. Maybe reward? I, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see if Knuckly Kong wants to follow yeah. up on that. Was there another experience yeah, egg we didn't dragon, see there? The dragon dropped an egg. Okay, dragon was an egg. Yeah, yeah. So gotcha. Greg. Oh, oh, the dragon. Oh, so that's the third egg. Okay, so the dragon dropped an egg and the, the and the statue was an egg. Good lord, yeah. Omelet seed, for sure. I feel like I haven't seen an experience egg in, like, what seems like forever. I'm overdue. <laughs> I've got an egg. Yeah. Well, you did have that experience recently where you the the egg was missed in Zozo recently, so um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was <laughs> that does happen in these seeds. You know, you only get what you get. Not everyone checks every single check in the game. Some people are going to find something you don't find. That just goes right back to what you said earlier. You just have to work with what the game gives you and maximize it. You know, if you miss something, it is what it is, right? You'll miss something sometimes. Other people will miss something other times. It just is what it is. This level magic fight is disgusting. Dicey, and we can't. We got more fights here. We do love Golem. It had hit point bonus, and in of itself is a useful Asper. I believe multi summon is on for Moogle Cub. Multi summon so is that. definitely on. Yeah, so they can summon as much as they want, um, especially multi during Kefka. And times. <laughs> These are a little bit more manageable. Yeah, but we're getting real weak, so I think we're running into the same problem we had before of no potions. A lot of Phoenix Downs, no potions, so he's kind of in a predicament right now. Thankfully, if he can just get through these minecart sections and just get through that boss, he will get a full heal before the last boss of Magitek. You don't have to use the save point or anything. Mm -hmm. For the boss, 100% heal. I would say the other bright side is the two characters that should be getting levels and experience no matter what are up. These are our two sword. This is sword team. Sword team alpha here. And they need every level they can get. And they're getting them. The other two... Are more magic support. This is perfectly viable to carry us through most of the game. We'll need to figure out how we're gonna do like a third lane in Kefka's Tower. Exactly. Um, I think this group is already, if he could just get one cure spell, like a cure two, he's done. He could finish the whole game with just those two, sw those two swinging their weapons if he can get through the lanes, but it is that third lane that will be tricky. It's definitely like What's interesting about this is there's kind of like multiple trains of thought that go on in terms of like racing play where there's of course what's in front of us, which is like, how can I get through this fight in the least amount of actions? Um, sometimes it can be counterintuitive and that might mean I'm just going to have this one character go and let everyone else do nothing. Um, there's the, like, where am I going next? Where am I going after that? It's sort of, like, routing thoughts. And then, how am I going to get through the end of the game? Like, do I have the tools and the firepower and the resources to conquer Kefka's Tower? And so, a lot of times, I, I try to encourage, like, 
little breaks like this, the minecart ride, these are all good times to think about the, what are we doing next? Do we, like, do we have enough firepower to, to step on the gas and, and just finish the game? You know, or do we need to do some more shopping, right? Like, it's using kind of the in-between time to think about those kind of next couple steps so that during like a fight, you know, a boss fight, we can full brain just focus on how do I take this fool down in the least amount of moves. Absolutely. And I did like your point about, you know, you said it sounds counterintuitive to us. Maybe it doesn't because we're so used to playing these games. But, you know, one thing I try to stress to anybody that I've mentored, especially those who just have just barely started and still maybe have some vanilla tendencies is just not all the characters have to act. Sometimes the best move is just to let one dude swing and everybody else can just stand there. Frequently, that will just cause less counterattacks and less sort of just fluff attacks that maybe do 100 damage when you have someone else swinging for three or four, you know? Yeah. So it's one of those things that you just kind of develop over time is just understanding who are your carries and how can you maximize them to speed up your bosses as you go through. And your, your point of just spending the downtime working on your strategy, where am I going next? What do I need? What are my best options right now to fill, to fill, through, fill up my requirements for Kefka, that sort of thing? The downtime definitely makes sense. And I'll do that while routing frequently in long places like Mount Colts or Ancient Castle, or even if I'm doing my loot early on in the seed, I'll spend that time mulling over in my head, you know, what's my plan of action? What am I looking for? And, and go from there. Yeah, definitely. Because, like, if we think about the buckets that we spend time in a seed of Worlds Collide, um, fighting battles is a big chunk of that time. You know, in the, in the pie chart. Of what am I doing <laughs> with my time in a Worlds Collide seed? Fighting is a lot of it. And so that's really... I think for me a big area of like constant focus is am I doing those as efficiently as possible then you have like your menu shop looting buckets of time I think together that's another decent chunk where it's like how am I minimizing do I only go in the menu and change equipment at save points and don't do it when I pick up a new shiny thing it's like, oh, I got an Illumina. I don't need to put that on until before I fight the next boss. So I'm going to wait as long as possible to do that. Sort of thing, right? And that's I a really hard habit to break. Like a hugely yeah. hard habit to break of like, you got a new shiny thing. You got a new big sword. You got a new relic you needed. Or you got a new shiny stone. And you got to see what spells there are. But the optimization is definitely to just kind of wait. Even if you really, really want to check out the new shiny. Um... Waiting until your next save point or the next time you really need to is is key for saving time in the long run. Um, I do agree with Nani Gray's choice here to head on up to Amaro. I know we were discussing that earlier. Just the sheer amount of dragons that they're fighting now uh, will get them caught up. Um, I do see a Fire 3 going on Gao, which is huge. Well, that looks like he's going. they're going Magic Power plus 2 on Gao, so definitely going to be the caster. Oh. Nope. They're going with Fire 3. Oh, there's two magic power plus two espers, it looks like. Aha. So the seed wants to divide attention a little bit. Like, look at all these big oh, swords, oh, but oh, also oh, look at these. <laughs> yes, and Nani Gray actually already knows Ultima on one of the characters. So they are good to go there. So that definitely, if you have an esper with Ultima and a Moogle Cup seed, there's never a reason to ever look at the Cursed Shield. I don't know if they went there to do the Cursed Shield, but I would not have. Uh, Mount Zozo, also a great choice with Ooh. Cyan, you know, going there for the decent amount of loot, although I don't know that they need a ton, but still a good place to loot while you're routing. Has a nice dragon, and it's a free check at the end. But we have ourselves a spicy chicken on the right. Thankfully, yeah, we, we have both. Ultima available, so it should go down pretty quickly, I would assume. Wow. 
Stop is and... nice on Poltergeist. They have X magic too. Um, they're weak to bio. Not that we need it. They're weak to Ultima. Like everything is. Absolutely. Everything is very weak to Ultima. Well, and that's, that's on sort of single targets, but, you know, also does work on multiple targets. Oh, definitely. Uh, it shines greatly on Kefka. If you have a pumped up magic caster, you just shred through tier two in, you know, a minute. And I know you mentioned uh, something about spicy chicken there, and that's another thing that you can think about when getting faster in the game is what status ailments can you put on them, especially on the most dangerous bosses, and what are their weaknesses? And you mentioned both. Spicy chicken is weak to stop. You can just shut him down entirely, can't act at all if you have stop. But also, weirdly enough, you would think something using fire attacks, gigantic red chicken thing, would be weak to ice. It's not. It's actually weak to bio. And those little weakness knowledges, or the, the knowledge that you have of weaknesses, will help you speed up battles, especially in situations where you are not as pumped up as these characters are right now. Yeah, indeed. And uh, I'm just looking at a little bit of Red Dragon goes down. We're pulling on some monster in the boxes. There is our offering. Okay, so now we definitely have an Atma weapon on the table. In fact, I would say we need that offering, or not the offering, but the Atma weapon as soon as possible. Because that is huge. I don't know if we have a Genji glove, but even just swinging a Atma weapon four times with an experience egg, you're going to be hitting for, what, about 4,000 per swing four times by the time you get to the end? Yeah, it's one of the, this would be one where I would maybe challenge a little bit of like, but do we need it though? We would have to go back to South Figaro. That is true. We've already doubled back there twice. So it's a it matter take of, that long, you know. But we have two big swords, Ultima, Madge power boosting. It would be more offense and certainly would probably be faster than maybe casting Ultima. Like, Ultima does take some time. I'm not necessarily, like, disagreeing, but I think it's an interesting, like... I, there's an area to save time with, like, a decision we make. And it's always going to be, like, assessing, do we have enough power? I'm not the one sitting in the racing seat, and, like, in the Moogle Cup, mentors are not going to, like, say that yes or no anyway. But... This would be a question that I would be asking. I was like, yeah, I know the ammo weapon's there, but like, do we need it? Or do we want it? Because we definitely want it. That is really true. Um, I do have one small counterpoint in this case, and that is the ability to break damage cap, particularly for mm. tier three. So right now, I don't see any Genjis. Looks like Edgar's slapping down some uh, snipers right now, which I, that would work actually just fine. That will probably break damage cap by end game. So I don't even think the Atmos are really necessary now that they have the sniper, but let's assume sniper wasn't there. Breaking damage cap for final Kefka, especially tier three, just makes it infinitely safer. And I don't see any other ways besides that offering and some weapon to be able to get there later, but Nani's using the, the sniper, so. Uh, that's going to do three yeah. times damage to Kefka because he's flying. So they'll, they'll shred him up, no problem. Yeah, I think, like, I kind of bundled looting with shopping with menuing because I think any of those individually, I mean, it's not even I think. I've done enough runs with the Stats Companion app running to see, you know, where, like, it's not nothing in a seed, but I think in terms of, I often advise Moogles like, cut down your looting and your shopping like the last bucket to start thinking about because I just think there are bigger time save opportunities than going from like opening a hundred chests to 90 chests. It's not nothing, but you know, we're probably talking about 30 to 40 seconds. And especially, I think, at the newer levels, being able to consistently like finish runs is more important 
than trying to shave off those like tiny but riskier sort of time saves. That being said, Leaf has been sending it, so it's not that it's everyone kind of has to find their own style. There are a lot of viable ways to be a top runner and go really fast in this game. And that's one of the things that makes it interesting. Absolutely, and I love that they have just been straight up sending it. Just no fear, all gas, no breaks. Doesn't matter what offense or healing they have. We're going straight to Burning House at level three. No grinding, no potions. Let's go. And I'm actually, I'm loving watching it because it's working out great. Um, and it's fun. It's just fun to watch, you know? It makes it really exciting to see just those risky strats pay off. But uh, Shiva is is being a whole a whole piece right now, it looks like. Yeah, 8 4, level 24. Eight. We're starting to get to the place where things are going to be casting higher tier magic. Chiva and Ifrit have pretty high physical defense. And this is kind of the downside to Leaf's strategy. So Leaf has put a tremendous amount of stock in pure physical. While Nani has gone the opposite direction a little bit, they still have big weapons and they're still using them, especially with the with the Yeti. Shout outs to Nani using that <laughs> Yeti with the Illumina. Fantastic. But Nani's balance or offense is far more varied. Now we can see that Nani is hanging out here fighting the exact same fight now, and Nani is going to get through it a full minute and a half faster, probably. And it's already done. One shot because of that Ultima and prioritizing the balance here. Um, I don't think Leaf is in a bad place, but having some degree of balance definitely makes a big difference, as we just saw there. Yeah, I would commend them both on being pretty decisive in general. Another Illumina. Um, we did see Offering with Ragnarok. Maybe not the most ideal use, because we won't get those two times damage procs, but I would also say... I think both of them are making a pretty big effort to menu fast and perhaps maybe pressing it a little bit too fast. They're another like counterintuitive thing is in Worlds Collide there are times going a little bit slower will be faster in the long run. Um, we want to avoid fiddling, but we do want to do big damage and like kind of cover especially in like Kefka's Tower I think that's like Kefka's Tower and the and the final Kefka fight are both situations where it's better to be deliberate and take a little bit more time with our inputs than trying to really like I make this mistake all the time when it's like no one's done in the race room yet I'm on final Kefka like I gotta just like <laughs> hit every button as fast as possible um, leads to heartbreak. Definitely. There is, you know, at least, especially early on, and I mean, it'll, it increases later to where you just start to be able to recognize things at a glance and kind of know exactly what you're doing over the, after you've done a few hundred seeds, you know, it kind of becomes natural, but uh, early on and even where I'm at right now, I'm still trying to work on not menuing too quickly and missing important details or mis misclicking, equipping the wrong things, having to look through espers two or three times because I didn't process what I saw when I checked it, that sort of thing. So there's definitely a balance of like, how fast are you going to menu and still not have to menu again to try and look at it again and remember what you saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess, like, I remember, you know, back when I was a newbie and, and I had, like, a VOD review of, like, you know, a PB and it was somewhere in the, like, 90-minute area. And it was it was a seed where I got the Valiant Knife offering, like, pretty early. And so I really pressed, right? And I was, like, so proud of myself. And then in the review, it was, like, they spotted it was like, oh yeah, the Asper had HP 100%. And if you would have put that on your VK user earlier, like at the beginning, um, you know, you might have been looking at like a 80 minute time <laughs> because just over the course of the seed, like I like capped my damage output by not spending an extra couple seconds to like look at Asper. 
But then it's like, well, when do I need to stop looking at Esper's? Because I thought, oh, well, that's good enough. But, you know, so it's kind of like, as you mentioned, it takes time. We got to build up that database of like seeds and situations in our head. And that allows us to kind of play with like maximum intent without overthinking everything. So we just have the confidence to be like, yeah, I've had this build before. It's good enough. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And just, you know, when we see something we really like and we know will work, we it starts to get to the point where you just kind of remember it. You know, if you see an, X, an HP plus 100 Esper, probably in your head, you're just waiting to see a VK show up. And the second it does, you just pop that on there and you're like, all right, well, that build's done. We don't have to worry about this anymore. We're done with this one. You know, but that just that just comes with time. Yeah, I'm seeing in chat, and the thing about the undead bosses flags is that when it is removed, those bosses can still be instant death for the most part. So they're still like easy win, you know, easy cheese available, if you will. Um, just with extra those. steps. It just, you know, it's not guaranteed. There is a weird exception to that, which is Haydn. Because for whatever reason, that boss actually has instant death protection, like, coded in. As opposed to the other ones where they were like, well, if they're undead. Instant death doesn't work on them. So... That is really caught. good information to know, actually. I do forget that Haydn. I was like, oh, Haydn, you can, like... Because I was thinking about it, and I was like, can I instant death Haydn? Have I not? Just because I'm... And I was like, well, how come I haven't seen anyone do it, though? Like, there's no way <laughs> that this that this doesn't, like... This is works, but, like, I couldn't logic it out, and I had to go look at the actual, like, boss weaknesses. And it's like, oh, even though he is undead in vanilla, he also has, like, death immunity. Therefore... When the flag is removed, you can't you can't raid in him. That's true. It's I really good information like, to know. Ah. Like, ha ha, get out of here! Like, yeah, super easy for sure. It's really niche and it almost like it, it was one of those days where I was like, did I just stumble upon the greatest dis discovery of all time? And I was like, no, it's, that's not a thing. <laughs> I even asked in the beginner's house. I was like, <laughs> so if undead bosses like can be instant death and Haydn is undead, how come I can't instant death him? And then I was like, no. Oh. Ragnarok or a character taking the skip? So I'm seeing that Nani Gray is currently going through Magitek, and I'm curious what they're gonna do. Are they going to warp out here? They only need one more Esper for unlock, so I would be shocked if they finish this place out. Um, I don't think anybody has really looked through Fnatic's tower, or peeked it to see if there was a character or an Esper, mm. uh, but that would be a huge play for Nani Gray if that's an Esper, because Ultima. They have Ultima. Like, nothing that exists there matters when you have Ultima and Fnatic's tower, so... It looks like they're going straight through it, so that is an interesting choice. Um, we do know that this is an Esper, so this is going to work out for Nani, but it is an interesting play when some other checks are available. Yeah, because the levels are in the mid. I mean, by the time we warp out, fly the airship somewhere else. I'm In my head, I can't, like... I might, if I, have, I might have to look at their tracker. I'm trying to think of what checks they still like have on the board for nani um, nani is opera house and phoenix cave and all of strago currently so all of uh setzers are done gal's done umaro is done basement and magitech soon will be done and all of edgar's checks are done so, so i think some... out of like what they have left on the board it's one of those like Maybe a couple of these are marginally better, but, you know, again, they were decisive. They were just like, I'm going to keep going. 
and that's better than spending 10 seconds being like, oh, I'm going to warp out or like warping out and then like flying around for a little bit being like, where should we go next? Um, Definitely. Now, if I had already checked Fanatic's Tower, I'd peeked it and I knew what it was already and I was only one Esper out, I would warp out and head straight there. The main reason being is that it's not that long. They have crazy offensive magic to get straight through it. You don't even really need the dragon at this point with all the experience eggs that they have sitting around. So you just rush to the top, get your high tier item, rush to the bottom, and you have your Esper and unlock right away. If I did not check it, which I do not think they checked it, I would probably have finished Magitek in this case because I really have no guarantee any of the other kind of gross checks that are available would have been an Esper any more than Magitek. So in this case, with the lack of information, I think Nani's Gray's, Nani Gray's choice to finish this is the right one. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious what the check count is as well, because I can see they're at 782, which is uh, 17. Leaf, Leaf but... doesn't care. Leaf says, I already have the skip. I have nine character skip. Right, but for Nani, you know, like, I, I'm, I don't know how close they are. Because I know at least, like, because Magitek won, okay, 18. And then this will be 19. So they're still three away, which is not... That's yeah, not great. They you could, could do Opera House Dragon, Toilet oh, Atma, right. Kafka's Tower Dragon. You are right. I don't right. know if it would be faster just considering, like, the offense. Usually I'm doing that for skip because I think the levels that I get will counterbalance the time I'm spending. That is it. true. And Nani is disgustingly powerful right now on all of her characters, all of their characters. Apologies. Yeah, like they, there's there's little that we know that Poltergeist is out of the boss pool as well. Like there's definitely unfortunate pairings, you know, like in terms of the tower team that we wouldn't want. Edgar Umaro to get matched up basically with um, like a tri talk, but they have fire three and Ultima even on Edgar, so they're pretty good to go. It looks like they're gonna go shopping. I'm trying to think of what might be in World of Balance uh, gauntlets. We going for a gauntlet here, maybe? That's the only thing I remember being in this relic shop. Yeah. Gauntlets. I don't hate that. I don't know yeah, that it was necessary, quick, but why not? It's a quick. I mean, yeah, you're already there. Might as well just. That's an extra, what, 25% damage or so? Yeah, we got a couple people. I mean, we already had one. We got to have another one that can use it. We. I like to have the option to throw a shield on. Sometimes I do that on the climb. Or, like, if I have, like, this is not applicable for them and their current offense, but, like, let's say we have Merton as a big part of our offense, and I want to use Gauntlet, but I don't have armor protection against Merton. I'll often, like, have the shield on for Tier 1 and 2, because usually if Merton, we don't use it as much on Tier 3 and 4, um... So I like having that like flexibility. I do this with the Genji Glove sometimes too. It's like start with the shield on tier one. It's because too many times tier one is crit countered a front row person with no shield down. <laughs> and I just can't take it anymore. So I really try to do everything to hedge against that. Maybe to my own detriment of going fast, but... Yeah, there was uh, the, actually the one in the finals. Um, I know Papa Shango was one. Do you remember who the other one was in the finals from Google Cup 1? Definitely can't, blanking. Yeah, I can't remember their name right off the top of my head. But one thing that they did call this game is Counter Fantasy 6 at the end. So, you know, everything counters at the end. All the end game bosses counter. All of Kefka likes to counter. It's just counters all day long. So as you said, if you have a Genji glove and you're ready to break damage cap for tier three or tier four, but tier one and tier two, maybe you want to back it off a little bit. You could have a Genji glove on and still have a shield on and then switch in that second weapon in tier three, tier four and start slapping. And I'm seeing that Leaf is, uh, 
you know, getting rocked over here by the wonderful counters of of Poltergeist. Thankfully, it looks like Celis was protected from that flare star. But you will see most of the time that you hit him, he's just going to counter over and over, and Kefka is no different. Yeah, we hate to see the statues in general. I'd rather see them out here and fight them with a full party than, than trying to 1 or 2v1 any of the tough bosses. I agree, and I'm actually worried about some of the tough bosses that are still available. Um, I don't believe we've seen a goddess yet, or a doom, mm -mm. and we have mm -mm. definitely not seen a magic master or a doom gaze, so we have... Doom gaze, four... because of the eggs floating around, I don't think it's incredibly... Oh, oh. Yeah, that's a 50 out of 40, but not for long. There's going to be a boss here, so... <laughs> Thankfully, it should be okay. Um, but still a consideration. It could be quite a nuisance anyway with less characters because of the area effect damage, the individual mm. dooms, and hey, we have a lock with Atma weapon, so enjoy that, Magic Master. Um, we shouldn't have much of an issue with him. This is the perfect party for him. Yeah, I love I love big... That big guard cast is also like fantastic. Strago is just a big old potato right now. He can't do much of anything, but he can big guard, which I don't hate at all. Yeah, it will definitely help. I think Block is rocking the Paladin shield. That's a good pairing with Atma weapon. Since we want high hit points, Paladin shield absorbs almost everything. Um, it really keeps that Atma user topped off. Just slicing through Magi Master like a lightsaber slashes through. Like, well, I guess everything. Everything, Except absolutely. Other lightsabers. And uh, if well, only they thing... had an Atma weapon, they could have defended themselves. If only. But no, just magic. They only use the Force. No, uh, no lightsabers this time. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is Nani Gray did put their physical attackers right on the right side which is eventually going to send them up the middle, which I think is perfect execution. We mentioned this earlier, we touched upon it, but physical attackers benefit the most from levels in this game, uh, twice as much as magic casters, in fact. There's whole formulas for it. I won't get too much into it right now, but your physical attackers will benefit twice as much from your levels. So putting them up the middle where they're guaranteed to fight three bosses, especially with experience eggs, guarantees that you're going to get several levels going up this tower just to make them even more powerful. Um, and that was Magic Master, which is a huge chunk of experience. They got two levels off that one fight, so just that is massive for that Atmo weapon user. Yeah, they're like 52 now. They're probably going to be close to 60 by by the end of the game. Um, Leaf going to pick up Esper 8 here. They could go opera. I'm trying to. They could go auction house. I'm trying to theory craft a little bit of the. Where do they get their last? Esper. It's yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd have to think either you're gonna peek that auction house or you're gonna maybe go to fanatics or something like that. Um, I do see Sabin. Did they? Did they do Baron Falls or maybe they could peek? Phantom Train is an option. It's not too long of a check if you're not looting. Yeah, Phantom Train is peekable. I think Baron Falls is faster, but not but not peekable. There are, there are some options. Auction House is random and never feels good, except for the, the like rare time. You know, we show up and get it first try. But I think just from like a, this is definitely like a showcase in, in the Moogle Cub. Anyone that learns a thing is a winner overall. Um, I would say they've both done a good job showing off good foundational knowledge. They definitely have taken different approaches. I think Leaf has been very aggressive. Um, and just pursuing checks and and i'll be curious to see if they were kind of going for the skip for the very beginning because that can definitely be an approach is be like i'm just going to chase characters and then i'll go back 
I mean, I think when they had seven characters and zero espers, that was the number one thing I would be thinking. Is like, I'm definitely getting the skip for characters. Like, there can't be a world in which that doesn't happen when I still need nine espers, you know? And I think, like, Nani is quickly, they quickly identified the variety of tools they had available to them. Um, and, you know, acted decisively pretty quickly built a pretty optimized party offense um and assuming that leaf is able to get their last esper dream. i'm fairly certain there were at least two espers here so they should have their unlock nani did complete this far earlier so that was part of why they got their unlock so quickly. And I love Doma Dream. It's three rather quick checks. Uh, looks like Leaf might be a little lost here. You want to take the first door on the left. There we go. And then you head on up, up into the right. Yeah, I think... Oh, not quite. So this is definitely a maze until you figure out the, the routing for it. But thankfully, at the very least, the path is always the same. So once you do learn it and you get it ingrained, you don't have to worry about, you know, stumbling around or getting lost in the dream anymore. That would be a disaster. I know somebody mentioned recently, I want to say it might have been you Ooh. saying if we could get a, uh, a flag update or a code update where the chest puzzle in Doma Dream has to be randomized? Was that you or was that someone oh, else? Oh no, I would never ask for <laughs> more. I don't even like the clock being randomized. Like, oh, was, well that's a disaster. At least Doma I already Dream did only the work has that. To, to solve the clock puzzle. I don't want it to do it every no single time. Kidding. I agree. I, I hate the clock, but at least the chest <laughs> puzzle is just like a couple stage, a couple screens back and then you remember it but i was like no absolutely not don't take away my doma dream it's the best <laughs> no i just want to run yeah it's 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 already a lot of routing you know it's it's pretty complex routing overall so just let's just leave it at that and not add any more rng to the chests. thank you so much and not only through their second lane here so they have one statue to go um they probably have like a five to seven minute, maybe seven to nine minute lead. I would say the real difference between the two is partially routing. Like certainly like Leaf is having to do more checks overall to unlock Kefka's tower. Um, and then I think also just because Nani got a couple of early espers that really boosted their power. That they've been a little bit quicker through some of like the shared bosses that they've been through. Um, but sometimes routing is just like the luck of the choice. Uh, like, and that like, was you know, part of that was part of what I said earlier. In that, <laughs> you know, with with that many characters, you know, you can go multiple different ways and. Even though they both did basically the same checks, the order definitely did matter here. Yeah, and, you know, there's definitely, you know, probabilities to be aware of, but just the nature of the randomizer is that, you know, the most probable path through the seed is not always the fastest. And there's, it's, I don't know, there's kind of no way to know. There are a couple people in the community that I feel like are logic whisperers, you know, where it's just like... It does feel like a little bit of a feel thing that once you just played a very uh, more amount of seeds than me that you develop this like intuitive sense and you can like whisper to the logic and be like oh yeah I knew it was a burning house seed and I was like what? Yeah. Well that's it. when you say that I immediately think of two people in particular and that's Golden Shocker and Falcon Hit 100% and it's so, rare either of them managed to get stumbled up by any seed. <laughs> but that being said, I think there's still like a lot of areas of uh, like opportunities for improvement. 
for anyone, you know, before it really gets to that point of, I'm the I'm the the seed whisperer. I don't I think I'll ever be there. The shape of the seed in like one minute, and and then I just and then I just play it fast from there. Yeah, I don't think that'll ever be me. So I'm just gonna enjoy the fact that I'm an elixir, and I hope I just get to stay there and not deal with all the mega elixir shenanigans because it's out of control there. So Naughty Gray starting Kefka at 110, at 111 on the dot. What a time for this seed. I knew Naughty Gray had improved, but goodness. They are crushing it right now. Um, tier 1 here, I imagine they do know that the left arm can be instant death. They do have break, which does work on the long arm closer to, closer to the screen. Looks like they are doing it. Looks like it did succeed. So that is fantastic. Head is weak to fire. I see that they are utilizing the weaknesses perfectly as well. In this particular phase, you want to instant death the long arm. You want to blast the head with fire and you want to kill the short arm last. The main reason being, if you kill the head last, you get quaked. If you kill the long arm last, you get shock waved. If you hit the short arm, you get no counters at all, except for its regular punch that it likes to do when you hit. So I'm seeing flawless execution here from Nani Gray. Unfortunately, though, I see that Leaf is sort of getting slammed around by Doomgaze here. Uh, took a swing for the fence and took it out with Celis at 89 life. That is fantastic that they were able to recognize that Doomgaze was so close and just swing and finish it instead of trying to play the pickup game. Yeah, Arrow at, like, level 40 enemy scaling is going to hurt. It's a pretty high spell power sort of sort of thing um yeah but turning back to nani gray they're already on to to tier two yeah i would say this you know i think that it really all kind of came together for them it's definitely a good example of the wow my it's like there's a certain point where if anyone can play their best during a seed that you can kind of beat anyone and it's it's kind of becomes about how do I like raise my my floor to consistently get better times while also kind of pushing that ceiling of like what what my best is and so yeah I think I think from both sides like Leaf is still on a a really good pace here as as well. Um, and I'm excited to see kind of how they finish it out. I think we're going to see two very different Kefka fights when they get to it because their offense is so different. Um, Nani Gray has already taken out Tiger and already taken out Tools. And Hit is already down. And it looks like Magic is not far behind. So this is looking to be an incredibly fast tier two as well. A couple highlights of this fight in general is that Magic on the left can be muted tools in the middle with the red dress or whatever it is that they have on can be instant killed but not broken hit punches things and tiger freezes things so typical order of operations you can mute magic on the left you can kill tools in the middle kill the tiger so he stops freezing you and doom tusking you and then finish off the other ones one at a time which again nani gray executes flawlessly yeah and they're really i would say being optimal with their action economy, um, which is really important for these next two tiers. This is where I see a lot of Moogles go off the rails, especially with some of the power overwhelming. This is a serious situation where we need to slow down a little bit, make sure we're counting our damage, make sure we don't eat a double medio. It is very easy to overshoot the damage cap here that you're trying to hit. You know, you don't want to push too hard and start getting mediated and get out of control. Uh, Gout with the Blitz, awesome use of Mantra as well, which I don't see a lot of other healing options, so having that in your back pocket is clutch. It looks like we are going for, of course, Killing Lady first. I believe that is her down. Not quite, but this will take care of her. Um, absorbs all elements, including Pearl, so you need to physically attack her. Took care of it, no problem. Uh, sleep, we really want to get him to about 28,000. 
Uh, it's it's like upper 28,000 before he starts countering. So typically what you want to do, get him to about 28,000 and then kill him in one hit, which he definitely can do with that Atma weapon. He'll just have to heal Locke first, or they'll just have to heal Locke first. And of course, set up your Calmness Protection because once he dies, he will instantly kill one or two people, or at least try to. It is a physical attack that can be dodged or blocked. So typically you want to use an Esper that will give you image or give you physical block like Golem in order to avoid that altogether. But it looks like we're just pushing straight into it. That should either kill. I think that's going to kill sleep right here. So we're just in it. I don't think we have Calmness Protection up, so let's see what happens. Ooh, not quite. He's very close, though, so we're probably going to get a Meteo any second now. Hmm. Too fast. Yeah, I think we got that was, lucky. That was close. I think we got lucky. We got no counters. And Sleep has the option to either train, Meteo, or nothing. I'm fairly certain he chose nothing on top of no counters, on top of one calmness. And I saw that uh, Golem was up, so... Sleep was very generous there, I think. Sometimes they play nice, but it's always good to be lucky, but I still think that execution was pretty good. And with their levels and hit point totals, like they do they do not need their entire party up to, to deal with this tier four here, so. I agree, and this tier I, four is I going see to it melt. Just being a little bit aggressive as opposed to getting into like a Take some damage, heal up, like, let's just go. A little bit of sending it at the end when it counts. Definitely. I did see, so this is another minor optimization that's important to think about, and that's that Nani had the op option to use Ultima or Fire 3. A lot of people are going to be like, Ultima is the most powerful spell in the game, I'm going to use Ultima, but that Mog is so pumped right now that no matter what they cast, it's going to do 10,000. So you cast the faster. Fire 3 is like a third of the cast time of Ultima. So using two of those was definitely the choice there. Yeah, Ultima is great, but it's important to think, do I have a faster option? And that's great. Great call out there of what, what some mentoring and practice will start to kind of show through is is that sort of decision making I also yeah, sometimes man. think the stage of the restream could bring out the best in all of us runners also the worst to be honest but <laughs> absolutely not a great finishes with a time of 11817 everybody let's get our GG's in chat that is the time that, that is the rough times that we saw in the finals of Moogle Cup 1 this seed delivered a tremendous amount of power, and Nani Gray was able to utilize it to its max and come home with the wind today. GG's. Yeah, taking the Yeti all the taking way. Taking the Yeti all the way. What a crowd favorite. Knuckly Kong over there. I see him with the uh, the Yeti jam. Though, I, I know who Knuckly Kong was going for when that uh, Umara was taken. Front to back, start to finish this whole seed. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to get Nani Gray in here for a post-race chat, but if we do, um, we'll definitely be doing that. What a run. Actually, Nani yeah, Gray, definitely. I forgot. Nani Gray started a little bit late, so uh, Leaf did start, and then it was about a five-second difference before Nani Gray hit the start button on her on their side, so their finish time was 1.18.12. Yeah, very impressive time. I would say um, end to end, just a really good, really good showing. Um, identified the power early, really like, honestly, I feel like if like I played that seed the same way, I don't know how much faster I would go, <laughs> like in terms of, you know, both like the routing they stayed out of the menus for the most part and and just overall put on a great show not not to say that leaf did not as well i think they were showing off a very aggressive early style that certainly could have paid dividends if the check rewards maybe would have fallen 
a little bit of a different way, but Absolutely. See, I, I, I believe uh, we're joined by both in chat, so physics, I'll let you start with the right. interview. Yeah. Yeah, welcome in, uh, Leaf and Nani Gray. Both of you wonderful uh, demonstrations of how to run these Moogle Cup seeds. Nani Gray, congratulations on your win with a time of 1.18.12. How are you feeling about that time today and this seed in general? I'm unsure if Nani Gray is muted. Oh, looks like they, well, no, they're, they're still here, but I'm going to let them sort of work and see if we can get those audio issues finished up here. But Leaf, uh, welcome in. Good to have you. How do you feel about this seed today? How did it all go? We noticed that you were going pedal to the metal the entire time. All gas, no brakes. So <laughs> what were it's your thought processes I, on that? It's the way I usually play. So I like to play very aggressive. So... Abs I mean, we definitely saw that when we saw that you were level three, no potions, and you just go, you know what? I'm going to do all the dead checks, or not all the dead all the free checks, and then I'm going to roll straight to Burning House. Uh, we were a little concerned, uh, especially with no potions, but it all worked out really well, and we were uh, very impressed with uh, with that, that level of aggressive play that you just really do not see very often. In terms of the seed in general, what were some of your thought processes on the sort of offensive options that they gave? What were you looking for? You know, what what was your overall game plan start to finish here? So, I mean, it gives you a Ragnarok and an Illumina in the first 10 minutes, <laughs> roughly. So like, you, you want to find somebody who can wield those. Like, I, I enjoyed the er, the prospect in the early game of Illumina Umaro <laughs> for the early game. That was a fun potential that got ruined by Edgar showing up. Absolutely. Uh, Nani Gray did take Yeti all the way through. They said, no thanks. We're we're taking we're, we're going the whole way. We're not getting rid of them. Illumina I Yeti mean, all the way. <laughs> I mean I mean, I bet you Knuckly was happy with this. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Throwing out those throwing out those emotes the whole run. <laughs> but yeah. Uh the biggest thing I felt like I was missing, I was really just missing honestly, I wanted an offering bad for Shetzer. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there was one available. I don't 100% remember where it was. Possibly Ancient Castle. Maybe yeah, somewhere a, else. I'm not the biggest fan of Ancient Castle, so I don't don't tend to put it, put it as a priority. A Burning House yeah, was a, an, an oddball to me, but it was a case of, I need to do some sort of uh, grind check. And, hey, that's a check that get me a bunch of battles. It's, if Depending on battles, it's a bunch of good experience. I can't argue with that. Uh, Fitz, you got any uh, questions for Leaf here? Yeah, it was definitely Ancient Castle was uh, a loaded, a loaded place. The, the check was, eggs. yeah, it was two experience eggs. The dragon dropped one, and um, the reward was also an experience egg. And I do believe that the offering was in a monster in the box. Oh, was it was either. Vanilla Katanasol? It was either there or... No, because I feel not, like we saw... Not vanilla. The, the yeti it wasn't one. vanilla. It was, it was the other in... one. It was in the uh, Master Pug chest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I did definitely overall, we saw great effort from both runners. Definitely a divergence in the routing a little bit. And, per and mostly kind of in like the order... Um, where we saw Nani get their hands on a couple of like magic power plus two espers. Uh, one of them had Ultima, and so they had a they had a little bit more diversity of of offense combined with having that Atma offering egg by the end. Uh, but I I still think Leaf had a great showing out there. It should be proud of their effort and and performance um and i think you know both runners will be doing great things in in the moogle cup to come oh 100 so it looks like uh 
We had Nani Gray kind of drop out here. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to have an interview. So let's just get some extra GGs in the chat for both of our runners today. Alif, I have one last question for you. You are a previous Moogle Cup contestant, correct? For Moogle Cup 1? Correct. I was... Uh, Chucks Up mentored me through... Actually, Chucks Up took me from... I've never played the vanilla game. I have actually never played vanilla F6, and Chucks Up mentored me through to get me to... From complete beginner to com can compete. Shout outs to Chucks Up. That's amazing, actually. So, you know... So I, I assume that the Moogle Cup is something that you would absolutely recommend for just about anybody trying to learn this game, correct? Correct. I would recommend Moogle Cup. I'd recommend the uh, Beginner's House, because even without Moogle Cup, I bet there are people who would be more than happy to teach their ways. Oh, 100%. This is probably the most supportive community I've seen of people who just want to help everybody forever. So, yeah, the Beginner's House is definitely a huge place uh, to go for any questions you have. But, uh, Leaf, is there anything that you're going to be looking forward to with this Moogle Cup or anything in particular that you're looking to improve upon in your second run through the Cup? Well, I, like I, I'm looking for... I'm looking forward to having, one, a new perspective on uh, how to go about, because... Uh, this I just did look at the list. I'm I've got Taco Mage for a runner for a mentor this time. So a fantastic mentor. You you can't go wrong with that one. So I'm looking forward to getting a chance to learn from a new perspective, and that's part of why I like this, this concept is getting to see the perspective of other runners. I like the community races for it. I like the uh, I like. I've been looking into the Ultras League with that to get the perspective of other runners. It's how I learn in other randos. It's how I want to learn here. It's to learn from other people. Well, you're definitely in the right place. So I just wanted to say, you know, thank you very much for coming in here, agreeing to be restreamed, and, you know, putting on this wonderful showcase for us. That's all the questions that I have. Uh, Fitz, do you have any other input or any, any last questions, parting words for us? No, I think it was a fun race to call. Um, like seeing the variety of approaches, I will plug. I do host a weekly async of the Ultros League. Flag said it's called the Ultros Underground. Unsanctioned sports entertainment. Really, it's just a practice. Um, streaming is now required. Anyone is welcome to join. And so if you are looking for more of that, ways to kind of get other people's perspective running a shared seed with usually between like 20 and 30 runners ranging from brand new to uh falcon hit on the on the skill spectrum um that's out there in the races channel get a new one every week uh and then yeah other than that Definitely for the, the Moogles coming in, we're excited to help you learn and improve at this game. That's really the the core. The racing is more for fun and also just to get a little taste of the mechanics of joining a race room and having the like schedule races with other people and all of that fun stuff. So I think it'll be a great time for everyone involved and I'm excited. It's kicking off again. Can't wait to get started on September 20th. With that said, I think uh, we're we're ready to go. Uh, I'm going to pass it on over. Ah, Nani. I do see that Nani has joined in. Nani, are you there? So we're going to see if Nani Gray can resolve the sort of volume issues they have with their mic at the moment. Um, if not, we're going to go ahead and swing on over to Honeydew. Uh, Drinks Glue did mention that he is currently running the Kefka Grand Prix Falcon Division run for week eight. So if you are in the Falcon Division or intend to run the Falcon Division seed this week for the Kefka Grand Prix, now is the time to graciously bow out to avoid spoilers. Everybody else... Please join us all in uh, saying hello to Honeydew as that top dog runs 
the last seed of the Kefka Grand Prix before we go to the finals. Glue, I'll let you take it off from here. <laughs> 